move forward. We cannot have the Spirit of God present here if we're holding hatred against our brother because they're different than we are. Is there any difference between you and me? If I cut you, do you believe the same way if you cut me? Yeah. Do you not have the same hopes and aspirations that I do? Do we not want the same things? This is what Christ has called you for. And in the book of Romans, you already found out in Galatians, that this is what God can do for you and in you and with you. And this is what the world is waiting to see. Amen. Especially in this day and age. Do not allow politics. Do not allow culture. Do not allow your past to taint who you are in Jesus Christ. That's a problem that exists in this church. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I don't know a lot about the conference, but do you have to leave or you can say it? Listen. I mean, I understand our leadership, but. How this works is if I stay here and this new pastor came, you guys will come to me. He's going to try to establish his authority, which he needs to be able to do. Is he the pastor? Does he have authority? Yes. And he needs to be seen that way. And he needs to be treated that way. And you need to give him all the respect that's due that position. But if I stayed here, there's always going to be, well, you never did it that way. I don't like this one the way this man preaches. Why don't you come back and preach? Uh, or you could say, wow, this guy's great. Why didn't we do this a long time ago? <laughs> I have to go so that I'm not a hindrance to him. So that you guys get used to somebody else being in that leadership role. Do you guys understand that? And it has to be for a at least a year. So again, I need to know for myself that you guys are going to be okay. I spent a lot of years, a lot of time, a lot of tears. Seeing how God will work in His church. And God has answered, as I told you before, every prayer we've ever placed in. We started out, we started out with an average age of 85 or more. Okay? We needed young people. God said, okay, I'll give you young people. We'll give you 50-year-olds. <laughs> God brought us 50-year-olds. We said, Lord, we need children. And then God brought us children. Okay? We wanted more people in the pews. We wanted to expand the ministry of the church, and we were at a point where there was not one room that wasn't being used. Did God answer your prayers? We were at a point where God brought us to make a decision. Will we move forward? Will we grow? We have an inadequate facility. What are we going to do? And it was brought before you guys, and there was not a cohesive bond of moving forward. And so now you guys have moved back. God in His mercy will bring you back forward again. You're going to have to make a decision. What do you want? If your mindset, listen to me carefully. If your mindset is, I only like a small church and I'm only going to stay in a small church, you're selfish. I've had people when we talked about expanding saying, well, this church gets big, I'll just leave it. Where's your heart at? Where's your commitment to Christ? Paul was willing to go into unaired areas and risk his life to plant the gospel. And if your church gets a certain size, you're not willing to stay? Shame on you. You can fire me. <laughs> These are problems that will agitate the church. Where's your heart and your commitment? Christ is not going to continue to bless this church if you're half-hearted. If you're only going to be here as long as this church meets your needs, does what you want, then you need to look at your conversion. <coughs> Is that straight? Can you get any straighter than that? These are where the questions that you're going to have to answer moving forward. What do you want? What do you want God to do here? God already knows, and God has made the plans. God's just waiting for you to choose to trust, believe, and move forward. And if you work with the new pastor, you're all going to be better off. Is that the first or the second? Second. Okay, are there any other questions and comments? This is just the beginning, the introduction to the book of Romans. As you continue on, really take the time during the week to not just go through the quarterly, but to 
get outside material. Uh, a good website uh, is the notes from the 1888 study committee uh, on the book of Romans. What is the website that actually has the notes from the what we're studying from the Ford? Do you know what that website's called? I had it, I forgot. It. They call themselves now the most precious message. I was on that website this morning. <clears throat> most precious message. Write this down. Look this up. Go on your computer and you can get this information. A uh, book that I would recommend highly is Wagner on Romans. It's a word for word um, commentary on the book of Romans. Here. Here's another book that I'm returning to. Okay. Listen. This is a big read. This is, if you want to know Adventist history, get this book. Now, I've had this book for months and months and months. And I'd like to close by reading something in the end here, in the back. One subject, this is Seder Roman, this is from the appendix. This book is great because if you read a chapter here, when you're done with the chapter, or what I had to do is start a chapter, get three paragraphs in, go to the appendix, and find out what's the history of what they're talking about. That's why it took so long. The, the Return of the Latter Rain. Ron Duffield. We're supposed to have a part two coming out sometime. One subject that has brought about much discussion in the last few years has to do with the sacrifice of Christ and what it accomplished in the past and accomplishes today. Often much of the contention centers on Romans 5, particularly Romans 5 verse 18. What did Christ's death accomplish for all men? In 1895, Ellen White wrote her well-known statement of the most precious message. Listen, brothers and sisters, you won't hear this stuff hardly anywhere in the Adventist church preached anymore. This is Adventist history. This is what we were called for. It's the only reason why we're here today. If you do not avail yourself of this teaching, you're not fulfilling what God has called us to do. Okay? I don't want to move backwards. I don't want to preach the same thing Sunday churches preach. If we do that, we could just join them. Okay? There's no distinctiveness for us, but God has called us. We were described in prophecy, and God fulfilled His word. Let Him fulfill it in us. Stay true to the message that God has called us for. Amen. Amen. This most precious message sent to the Seventh-day Adventist Church through Elders Wagner and Jones, she described it as the message that was to go to the world and be attended by the outpouring of the Spirit in a large measure. That's the latter rain. That's the message that will prepare our people to meet Jesus Christ in life. I don't want to meet Him in death. Amen. But what's that message? <coughs> most people have never even heard of Jones and Wagner. If you ask them what's the most precious message, they'll go, what? Maybe it's the Sabbath. Romans 5. Well, hold on. And attended by the outpouring of the Spirit in a large measure. A few paragraphs later, and still speaking of this message, Ellen White proclaimed, it presents the law and the gospel binding up the two in a perfect whole. See Romans 5 and 1 John 3, verses 9 and 24. These precious scriptures will be impressed upon every heart that is opened to receive them. The most precious message that will prepare the world for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Do we need that today? Yes. Is this message of what we read in Romans, what we study in Galatians, is it relevant to us today? Is there something special that the Adventist church needs to hear again? They've heard it before. And they've pushed it aside. And it's coming back. What will you do with it? Ricky, will you have closing prayer for us? Sure. Father, thank you.